Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I've got a first impressions for you. It's the first impressions of this. This is a Conklin Durograph. It's my second Conklin pen. If you've been following my channel, you'll know that I've had a horrendous experience with my previous one. So this is the chance. Will this redeem the Conklin brand in my eyes? Join me now down on the mat. We'll take a walk through the pen, do some size comparisons, We'll do a writing sample, and then I'll give you my first impressions of this pen. Welcome down to the table. Here we've got the pen. This is the Conklin Durograph, and this is forest green. Very pretty. Very nice. Just look at the colours on this. We've got dark greens, pale greens. We've got hints of whites coming through. Hopefully you can see the way that the light's being captured and playing off this pen. Very pretty. Let's take a walk through the body. So we start at the top. It's a flat end. There we've got Conklin and established in 1898. That's black. That comes down slightly tapering out so we get to this silver ring. Attached to the silver ring, we've got the clip. The clip, very stiff. I don't use clips very often, so I actually don't mind that. The only thing really a clip gets used for is when I put the pens into my pen case, just to go for the little loop to hold it in place. The cap, same width all the way down. We've got this little silver ring here. Let's see if we can see what it says on there. So I'm going around. Here we've got Conklin, and, and that's aligned underneath the clip. Nice attention to detail there. You know, that Conklin is centered underneath the clip. And it looks like there's a little bit there of patterning. We've got Durograph, a bit more patterning. Quite nice. A little bit more material, starting to taper down towards the body. Bottom of the cap, we've got a nice drop off down to the body. Body, same width all the way down. Could be slightly tapering in, but I think it's the same width. Another silver band. Then we've got a black end cap, and that's flat again. Not sure. Let's try this. I do this occasionally. It's sort of, it will stand on there. There we go. That's balanced on that bottom. So it is fairly flat. The cap, that's half a turn, one turn. About one and a half turns to come off, really nice. That's about the perfect spot, that's my sweet spot. So that reveals, we've got a nice black section with a little bit of, a, of an hourglass shape there. And then we reveal the Conklin nib. Nice looking nib. Silver, we've got the crescent shaped breather hole. Underneath that we've got Conklin. I'm gonna just hold this up. Yeah. Then we've got Toledo and USA. And at the side here we've got M. This is a medium nib. I believe the nibs for Conklin are made by Yoho. If we unscrew the body, we've got the included Conklin converter. Metal fittings. Nice body there. Oh, let's look inside the body a little bit. Can't really see much, can we? That goes back on. The cap. Again, there's a cap inside the cap. Very, very nice pen. Let's swap on over and we'll do some size comparisons. For my size comparisons, I've brought in my two standards, Pilot Metropolitan, Lamy Safari. All three pens look very similar in terms of length and also really in terms of width. Let's take the caps off. With the caps off, the biggest difference we can see now is with the nibs. Number six size nib there on the Conklin. We've got the Limey nib there, and we've got that Pilot number five size nib. In terms of lengths, the Safari, then the Conklin, then the Pilot. So we've got small, medium, and large. I'm going to fetch in another couple of comparisons. These are because when I first saw this pen, these are the pens that are in my collection that immediately jumped to mind. 
So the pins I brought in is a Kaigaloo 316 and a Hondian N8. I limit to have only two comparisons, otherwise I'd have brought in a Jinhao 100 Centennial as well. They just remind me so much of the shape of the Tonkin. Very, very similar. You can see similar in length, similar in size. The only big difference really is the size of the sections. So for my longer term testing, I will do some comparisons against these pens. Let's fill the pen with ink. So what I've already done, I, I actually did it a couple of days ago, is I've cleaned out the pen. So to clean it out, what I do is I take out the converter. This is one thing I will actually show you. The converter screws out, it doesn't pull out. So we've got some threads here down at the bottom. Hopefully they'll get cut in the camera. So when you're putting it together, that thread's in, so it's solid. You don't really have to worry about the converter coming out whilst you're writing. I do have some pens where that does happen. So I clean it out with a blunt nose syringe into the converter. And then for the section, what I do is I use a bubble syringe just so I can give everything a good clean. And I do that with every single pen I get. So let's leave that with everything off and we'll fill it with ink. So first thing, bottle of ink is a bit small. So I've got, well, I call it Quickie Koala. I know it's not Quickie Koala, but this is something my wife got from a charity shop and it's perfect for holding these die mine bottles or oh, this particular one is pure pens it's called john frost it's part of the chartist series of inks which were made for pure pens by die mine quite pretty but this it's a nice it's got a nice sheen to it so i thought, thought that might look nice in this pen i did debate putting a forest themed ink in here but I thought, no, let's let's stick with something different rather than just going for a plain green. So, plunges all the way down. I'm going to angle this so you can hopefully see as I ink it up. So let's work the plunger. There we go, we're fetching ink up. Go down again. And then one final time. And we've got an exceptionally good fill there. Just going to clean the nib off. Let's get this ink out of the way. Let's fetch in the notepad of testing. Here we've got the notepad of testing. Oxford Optic Paper. Very nice fountain pen friendly paper. 90 GSM. And here's the pen. Let's see how it writes. So we've got here. That might just be me where I've been cleaning off the nib. Let me just try on a separate piece of paper. Okay, we've got ink flowing now. So we've got a Conklin Geograph. It's got a medium nib. This pen was sent to me as a gift. When it arrived, I'd been having a really bad day. It really had been a bad day. Everything I'd tried doing that day was going wrong. I mean, we all get days like that. Uh, the pen arrived about lunchtime um, when the postman brought it. And I was absolutely gobsmacked and floored by it. I really was. I so much appreciated it. I will be contacting the person who sent it uh, separate to this. But thank you so much. You absolutely made my day. And you turned what had been a really, really, well, to be honest, crappy day into a really great day. So thank you so much. What I've done, because I like to give people ideas about prices, I have gone onto Colt Pen's website. That's where I get most of my pens from. So I will quote a price. I didn't pay for it. This was a gift from someone and I very much do appreciate it. So the price for cold pens is $137. That was on the 2nd of June. The ink in here. So we've got pure pens. John Frost. I think certainly the base colour is quite a nice match. Not sure if we'll see any of that sheen yet. Yeah, we can start seeing, certainly on the first line I wrote, you can start seeing hopefully coming through nice red sheen. We'll look at that again better in a second. Drying times. So we go immediate. Looks very wet. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. 
St still gushing, isn't it? I'm going to go on to the next line. One minute. Two minutes. After two minutes. Still getting some smudges. As a combo, this is very, very, very wet. I'm going to move the mic down to the page and write a sentence. That's nice. There's some gorgeous feedback coming through there, not just audibly, but through through my fingers. So like tactile feedback. It's very much a pleasurable pen to write with. Really is nice, really pleasant. I say I like the way it feels. It, it's got that tactileness to it, and I really like that. Line variation. So there's no pressure. I'm gonna add some pressure. Getting a much wider line. So no pressure with none with. I think by adding the pressure I've just caused the nib to run out of ink a little bit. Let me just see if I can get this going again. That I think was my problem is I was adding the pressure. Flow. Other way around. Actually feels smoother when I'm going backwards rather than when I'm going forwards. That's interesting. That's the first pen I've had that does that. Let's take a look again. Can we see any of that? Yeah, we look at that now, that gorgeous red sheen coming through. Certainly on the first two lines, and it's starting to come through in the sentence. So we've got this beautiful, like, teeny colour, and then smack, bang, wallop. You're getting hit in the face by this glorious red. Very, very nice. The pen... Very nice to write with. So what are my initial thoughts on the Conklin Gerograph? I love the looks of this pen. I love this colouring. I think that looks really nice. I love the feel of the pen. It's so nice in the hand. You know, unposted feels really nice. Bullet post. It does, but just onto the end here. But that's similar to a lot of the pens that I have that have this similar model, like a bit like the Parker Duofold type style pens. I don't have a Duofold to compare these against, so I'm just going against what I see when I look on the internet. Writes really well. I absolutely love the way that we're getting this red coming through. I love the choice of ink in here. You know, even the teal does match nicely to the pen did have a couple of little issues when I was writing. I think they were Gary issues rather than the pen, you know, because I do press quite hard when I'm doing these. And that could have caused an issue with the, the nib, but scribbled it off a couple of times on a piece of scrap paper and it started writing again. So that's something I will watch when I'm doing my longer term tests to see how it goes. Really nice. As I say, I was absolutely gobsmacked when this arrived in the mail and I would like to thank the person, the gentleman that sent it. Really do appreciate it. It was such a surprise. And I don't often get surprised by things, but that really did not be really gobsmacked me. So these, they are my initial thoughts on the Conklin Durograph with Pure Pens, John Frost. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on the Conklin brand? If you're really interested, please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button. Every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.